Welcome back to the weekend. We'll see a frost in the north on Friday, a frost across southern Scotland and northeast England on Saturday, and then it turns milder again, but rain comes in from the Atlantic. Charlie and Sal. Carol, thanks very much. Pleasure. Now today, finally, is the day for William Shatner. In a few hours, the actor, famous for playing Captain James T. Kirk in Star Trek, will boldly go where only a few men and women have ever been before. Space, or at least the very edge of it. Yes, he is 90 years old and he will officially become the oldest person ever to fly into orbit when he joins three others on board the Blue Origins New Shepard rocket owned by the US billionaire Jeff Bezos. Our correspondent Sophie Long has been following final preparations. I'm going up into space. Uh, I don't know how many people can say that. It's life changing. Interest in space exploration has waned over the last few decades. The fact that William Shatner is making this journey has renewed some of that sense of wonder. There is an adventure in my life that I would not have had had I not done this. And it looks like there's a great deal of curiosity about this fictional character, Captain Kirk, going into space. For those who've never watched an episode of Star Trek, here's why. Captain Kirk is possibly one of the most known, iconic, mythological characters in our, in our sort of collective pop culture. And the idea that the man that portrayed this daring captain pushing us to the limits of our knowledge and exploring the deepest frontiers of space gets to go into space himself, it, it just makes me laugh. I, I wish William Shatner the best of luck on his voyage. It's reignited interest in space travel and also in the series that broke so many boundaries all those decades ago. In the original series, you had a black woman and an Asian American man in space during the civil rights movement. In these ways, Star Trek has always pushed a more progressive vision of inclusion. Whatever the conversation is at the time, it pushes that forward and it says, look at what we could do if we worked together. Over the years, Trekkers and Trekkies have found much to bond over, including their own language. I was hoping I might be able to learn a few phrases. Do you think that's a bit amb ambitious or not? I think if you have the desire, then we can make it happen. And as it happens, here and now you have your very own personal Klingon language coach. How about, this might be a nice one. He's going to be a rocket man. So, Hong Hong Hor Nuvmoj. Hong Hor Nuvmoj. He's becoming a rocket man. Hong War. War. So say ga. Ga. Now say ga 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 ga. Ga 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 ga. Now make a blade of your hand and lightly, because I don't know what the BBC insurance is like. Lightly, as you say ga 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 ga, bounce it against your throat. Ga 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 ga. You're doing it. That's the ga sound. So Hong Hong War Nuv Moj. Hong War Nuv Moj. Come here, rocket man. Well, yeah, I'm confident I'm going to be able to practice that one. A little more tricky than I thought. To make if all goes according to plan, he won't be exploring strange new worlds or making first contact with new life forms. But William Shatner's historic flight to space will be extraordinary for science, for pop culture, for the future of space travel, and for him. We're just at the beginning, but how miraculous that beginning is. How extraordinary it is to be part of that beginning. This mystique of being in space and that much closer to the stars and being weightless. I shall be entranced by the view of space. Sophie Long, BBC News, West Texas. There will be a lot of people very excited about this trip. Captain James T. Kirk actually goes to space. At the age of? 90. He is 90 <laughs> years old. It's, uh, there's so many wonderful things about this story. And um, himself, William Shatner, is quite a character. To he say is, the least. He? He's quite a character. And over the years, he's done all sorts of things. Uh, music, he, of course, famous for Star, Star Trek itself. Um, last time we spoke to him was 2016. Here at BBC Breakfast, he was talking to our entertainment correspondent, Colin Patterson. Have a listen. Colin, I was just going to ask, would you ask uh, William Shatner if he'd indulge us by giving a few of Captain Kirk's old instructions from the, the captain's seat that he's in? You know, some of the old old school instructions he used to give on, on the, the desk there? 
Charlie is requesting that you could give some is of the Charlie earth. there? Charlie stage. Charlie, well, great to that's great, Charlie. <laughs> what are you doing there? Not here. He, he would love to get some of the I old school was... instructions yeah. given from you yeah. to the bridge on yeah. BBC Breakfast. Okay, so first of all, cover your eyes. Like, here comes the alien. Oh no, do that, Charlie. Oh no, say oh no, Charlie. Oh, oh no. no, oh no. And then look up and say it's going to eat me. And now fall down, Charlie. <laughs> great. <laughs> It's a surreal moment. Colin, thank you. Thank you. And thank Mr. Shatner. It's fantastic seeing him. Oh. So that was when they'd, they'd recreated the Starship Enterprises He's your bridge. Friend, clearly. No, no, I just, he's just one, yeah. one of those wonderful, uh, delightful, eccentric characters. And they'd recreated the bridge of the, the Enterprise, his spaceship, and he was sitting in the captain's chair. Those mm -hmm. that will remember those scenes very Obviously well. Obviously having the time of his life. Yeah. And uh, I'm, we have to assume he's not the captain of this particular. No space vessel. Let's hope not. But, okay. um, so we're told, I mean, we were just checking the timings a little earlier on. What time is it? Um, half past two this afternoon. Half past two this afternoon yes. is, is lift off. After a couple of days delay, because the weather hasn't been very good, right. and there have been proper serious concerns about safety. Yeah. So they're being extra careful. And he was laughing about it yesterday, saying they're very worried about us. And he was totally relaxed. Apparently he's a, his friends call him a bit of a cowboy. Yes. Likes being scared. Well, also, he has a, a track record in the music industry, which is yes. uh, why he became friends with, uh, I guess we will hopefully speak to maybe a little later on, Ben Folds, um, who's known him for a very long time. We're just seeing some of the shots there as he's pre preparing. I dare say, in amongst all his uh, joking and the delight that he's giving people, I'm sure he's taking it pretty seriously. Because at the end I of the day, know. this is this is he a liftoff into space. No, he looks unafraid. I reckon he's cool as a cucumber. As Ben was saying, um, he calls him Bill. He says, Bill, my friend, that's William Shatner to us, is a brave, macho fella. He likes being afraid. He likes being scared. And if you wanted to follow it, I'm told that a, a live stream is, uh, you can follow the live stream 90 minutes before the launch uh, on Blue Origin's website, and uh, you will be able to see it happen live. Unbelievable. Can't wait for that. Um, it is 6.53 exactly. Let's have a look at some of today's papers, shall we? The eye is leading on the chaos at Felixstowe Port with containers piled up and unable to move because of the lorry driver shortage. Paper warns that deliveries for Christmas are among the goods going to be affected. The Telegraph reports on a warning from the United States that older adults should not take daily doses of aspirin to reduce the risk of heart attacks or strokes. Expert panel says the risk of side effects outweigh potential benefits. The NHS has not changed its advice. Hundreds of people could die in floods in the UK, 